The overriding objective of a business process is to consistently deliver the needed information to the appropriate stakeholders in an efficient, no wasted effort, and effective, all of the information and only the information needed approach. This presentation is the first of five in a series that will cover an approach for the effective and efficient implementation of any request and workflow process within the Hewlett Packard Project and Portfolio Management System. This approach is driven by the information needs of the business stakeholders to make decisions and is defined based on the functional design, behavior, and configuration requirements of the system. Additional artifacts, details, and presentations related to process engineering, systems implementation, project management, and HP PPM are available at simplebs.com. The series includes five presentations, each of which reflects a phase in the sequential <clears throat> efforts associated with an effective approach for the deployment of requests and workflows. We will present the activities and artifacts associated with each phase. These phase artifacts will provide the foundation for an effective process system management control system for requirements, changes, training, and continuous improvement for the associated process and system artifacts. The first presentation will cover the process definition, which defines the overall information needs by the organization to complete the process objective. The second phase involves the definition of the process steps activities by the process stakeholders. The third phase involves the decomposition of the process steps activities into the data elements required to support the needed information to complete the step objectives. The fourth phase focuses on how the system facilitates the execution of the process by supporting enterprise collaboration and the application of data and information security as well as internal controls and governance. The last phase involves the activities related to moving from the definition and configuration of the as-is process to the deployment and implementation by the organization of the new to be process in the production environment. Each of these steps is completely dependent on the preceding step in order to maintain a focus on the scope of the change the process objective and development approach. All of the artifacts required will be demonstrated and many are available on our website. Supporting artifacts for ongoing maintenance, training, and support of the HP PPM tools will be presented where appropriate. We are going to use the proposal process as an example of the request workflow development and delivery approach. Keep in mind that this five-step process should be applied to every business process to be supported by the HP PPM tool including project management, resource management, risk management, and any other cross-functional, collaborative, repetitive processes. Each of the five phases should be completed and integrated into an end-to-end -end framework prior to initiating the next phase for any step. So we are going to start with a generic six-step process to facilitate strategic planning. There are default processes reflected in the workflows for each of the supplied best practices request types. This is not the out-of-the-box workflow for proposals, but one that I have evolved after 20 years of process and business consulting and is only a starting point for the first phase discussion. The key to effective process definition is to define the process from the top down based on the information needs of the process decision makers and then the process steps to deliver the information and then the data requirements from the bottom up based on the system design and functionality to support both. So we'll start with the discussion of the first step, ideation, proposal registration, or whatever the organization would call the transfer of the idea from the back of the napkin to a system designed to facilitate the strategic planning process. We'll explore all six steps using the same approach. We want to discuss the step with the person who draws benefits or uses the information from the step to make a decision to proceed with the idea or kill it in its tracks. We're going to discuss the step with the primary step stakeholder to determine five things. The first is the answer to the question, what? What needs to be done? What information and output needs to be developed and communicated? What analysis and evaluation needs to occur? What decision needs to be made? What is the output of this step? For our register idea step of the proposal process, we are defining the idea at a very high level and identifying the impacted stakeholders. The answer to this question is interrelated to the answer to the next question, why? What is the contribution of this step? How is the process served? Who is the downstream user of the output? Are there negative impacts if this step is not done? Why are we doing this step? These first two need to be answered together as the answer to one may change the answer to the other. 
Every step can be, be validated by the answer to this question. If the step is necessary to effectively and efficiently complete the process objective and the output of the step is used in a subsequent step, it is justified. If the execution of this step has no bearing on the outcome of the process, then it is not a valid step. That's not to say it's not justified or necessary, but it should be, should be a requirement of the process and not a step within the process. This is the primary reason for unnecessary process complexity, which leads to confusion and raises the risk to process success and adoption. For our proposal registration, the answer to the question is that we need to solicit input from other stakeholders based on their knowledge, experience, responsibility, and understanding about how this idea might impact them and our customers. The next informational requirement is the answer to the question, how? How do we accomplish the step objectives? How do we communicate to the stakeholders? How do we manage progress? How do we manage quality? How do we manage risk? This is the nuts and bolts of the step. However, in this first step pass, we are talking to the user of the output of the step. We should gather what they know about the underlying process, particularly as it relates to their utilization of the information, but every phase of this approach is another pass along the same process framework, each elaborating the defined process step to date. The stakeholders, perspectives, and the utilization will change with each pass. This is the only way to gather an integrated view and understanding of how the organization works together now and how their collective performance can be continuously improved. All the steps are not necessarily complex, and the output of some may only be a decision to proceed. What makes it a separate step is a change in organizational responsibility to act, or a significant change in the state of the process. Some responsibilities can be implemented without a separate step based on workflow configuration. For our registration step, the how clearly ties to the what and why. We want input, so we need to know from whom, and we must define what we want input on. So the what and why completely define the how. Communicate the idea to the impacted stakeholders. Again, this is the high-level view by the user, so avoid solutioning and maintain the information need perspective. The next element is the answer to the question, who? Who will benefit from the change? Who will have to act to make the change? Who will be impacted by the change? What knowledge or expertise is required? Who is impacted if we don't change? This far down in the definition, it typically has become obvious as to who should or who can accomplish this step. As you implement new functions, controls, and or organizations, it may not be so obvious. You would expect that the person with a napkin in is the actor or step stakeholder here. Probably a business analyst or administrative assistant actually executes the step. That is obviously dependent on the current and the 2B process. Keep constantly in mind that all attributes and characteristics of the current process and any suggestion for changes must be gathered and noted through each pass of this development approach. Every element must be included or at least considered in the migration and deployment plans. These two artifacts will be fully addressed in phase five but are initiated and elaborated throughout this iterative process definition approach. The last requirement element is the answer to the question, when? Do we need it now? What's the risk if we wait? Should it be done along with something else? Is it too far out to determine due to the risk of change? Will I have everything from the other steps that I need to accomplish the step objective? That is the same approach that is utilized to develop the work breakdown structure for a project. It's really generic work management. Plan the work, work the plan. It is also the reason you can start with any step and end up with the same end-to-end -end process. A complete list of all the steps and only the steps required to complete the objective. If you define the required input and the output or contributions of each step and each required step is included, you know you are finished. This is the primary driver behind the first register idea step. Make sure you have all the impacted stakeholders engaged in the thought process. Your risk is inversely proportional to your level of participation and socialization. For our idea registration, before the idea is captured, it's only one person's thought on the back of a napkin. This is the first step and there are no prerequisites. Good ideas and opportunities are everywhere. Capture them. If they are not shared, they cannot be acted upon. The last piece of information to be gathered from the step beneficiary is the step deliverables. What is the output of the step? What is required in order to move forward? Is something initiated in the step and not finished here? Is information elaborated in this step? 
What is the thing, the deliverable, the decision, that its availability enables us to know the step objective has been reached and we are ready to move on? For our proposal process, this means we have high-level definition with sufficient details that the impacted stakeholders can determine if they are in fact impacted by the development, deployment, or implementation of the idea. We also have made an attempt to figure out who those stakeholders are. Those two identifications mean we are ready to communicate to them, which is the objective of the step. In addition, as we are developing a process definitional approach, we need to know from the step beneficiary who in the organization is the SME, has the experience with the step, does a high quality job, and has influence with their peers. This identifies the stakeholder representative for the next phase of our development process. We move to the next step in our baseline process. Our finished product may look nothing like this initial high-level process, but the steps, objectives, and contributions should make sense and provide the basic elements for effective management and reporting. You will find stakeholders that need to be interviewed about the process that don't own a step but are critical. A finance guy about capitalization, a strategic planning team about timing and artifact management. We'll review this, the results of this first pass down the proposal process to establish a framework for the other four phases of our process development approach. The second step is to define the opportunity or requirement to a sufficient level for the delivery operations impacted stakeholders to provide an estimate of costs. The delivery team stakeholders would provide high level estimates. We need this cost in order to provide the financial perspective of the benefit and prioritization of this opportunity. The estimates are returned to the sponsor to complete the business case. This step serves as a cue and is utilized by each business unit as well as the enterprise planning group. To prioritize opportunities, each unit prioritizes its initiatives <clears throat> based on the goals and operations of the unit. The enterprise prioritizes the business unit's top priorities and then releases the highest priority opportunities based on strategic alignment and capacity for more detailed planning prior to release for execution. When available capacity moves into the planning horizon, the highest priority initiatives are released. Plan resources. For detail resource planning, this step involves a decomposition of the high-level labor estimate into by role, by period, by sourcing organization detail resource requirements. The final step in the strategic planning is the scheduling and release of the initiative for execution. This re release is based on the highest priority and benefit opportunities and the availability of the capacity to deliver the project objectives. The step involves the addition of the incremental resource demand to the current active commitments to assess available capacity. How do we work together more effectively and efficiently? Consistent execution, feedback, evaluation, and continuous improvement. That concludes the process phase of the request development and deployment approach. How do we effectively manage this first of five passes through the process? I use Visio as it easily facilitates the initial requirements gathering for the process. All of the data elements of each step can be identified and clearly reported. The integration between the business process and the HP PPM tool can also be reflected in the model. More importantly, it enables leveraging of the requirements gathering process into the use case, training, and ongoing communications processes that will follow. When the Visio document is web, web published, all of the details are available to the end user community using Internet Explorer only. In addition, templates, examples, the use case, and any other artifacts associated with the model process steps can be hyperlinked from its relevant data elements in the drawing. This provides an online navigation system to all the information associated with the process. Thank you for reviewing this presentation, Business Process Engineering for the Hewlett Packard Project and Portfolio Management System. This is the first step and presentation of a five-step series on an approach to effectively design and implement HP PPM facilitated business processes to support your informational and continuous improvement needs. Your comments and suggestions are greatly appreciated. Please forward them to simplebs at gmail.com. Thank you.